Okay, one more video on chair confirmations and cyclic rings and new projections and all that fun stuff. And, uh, and then we'll be done with all of this stuff and you'll know everything you need to know. Um, what we're going to talk about today is bond rotation in chair conformers. So um, we said that kind of cyclic rings limit bond rotation. And so there's really only one move that we're allowed to do when we do uh, when we are in a chair conformation. And so we're going to learn all about it. All right. So let's say that you have, well, we'll stick with methyl cyclohexane. And let's say that we have, you've successfully drawn your chair and then you forgot where methyl groups are supposed to go and you drew an axial methyl group in this, at this valley position. So the methyl group is down at the valley, which is down and axial, right? Down and axial. All right, so that's, this is the, this is a less stable option. Less stable with CH3 in axial position. Right, and that's, it's less stable because we have steric repulsion. From gauche interaction of the methyl group and the ring, right? So this methyl group is kind of running into this carbon-carbon bond over here, right? Those two things are running into each other, right? That's the sign for things running into other things. Um, so what can we do? So let's go to a Newman projection. Back to the Newman projection. We have a methyl group in a down axial position. We have a hydrogen in the equatorial position. On the other carbon, of course, we have just two hydrogens here and here. And we have that. So what would we do if we wanted to, if we wanted to make this into a more stable Newman projection? What we would do is we would rotate. Right, we'd rotate this methyl group 120 degrees until it's anti to the ring on the other side. But when we do that, that means that this rotates 120 degrees. That means that this rotates 120 degrees. And so what do we get after we do this bond rotation? Rotation. What we get, and now I have to make sure that I can draw this, is we get a hydrogen over here and we get a methyl group over here. And then on the back carbon, nothing has changed. So we just get a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and this is the rest of the ring. So then we get that. Okay. Notice that we still have a six-membered ring. That's still okay. But now, right, where are the axial positions? And where are the equatorial positions, right? The axial positions are the gauche positions. So this is, oops, this is axial, and this is axial. Axial, axial. And then, of course, the uh, the anti positions are the ones that are equatorial. And so the equatorial, equatorial. Right. So notice what we've done. We've taken the CH three group that was in an axial position because it was gauche to the six membered ring, and now we've by doing a bond rotation, we've converted it to being um, equatorial, which is good news. So. What does that look like if we draw a chair conformation? You may be asking yourself. And what that looks like is now we have, so the methyl group, if we kind of look at this, the methyl group is still pointed down, but now it's equatorial. So the methyl group needs to be at a down equatorial position. Hydrogen is axial. And then, of course, whatever the group is behind it, they got two hydrogens there and there. Right. So notice that now we're in the more stable with CH3 in the equatorial position. Right. And so this is called, it's converting from the axial to the equatorial, this is called a chair flip. And what you're doing is you're converting that methyl group from an axial position, down axial, to 
down equatorial. Right, so it's still pointed down, right? Now that it's at a, so it's gone from being at a valley to being at a peak. Sorry, I'm using the wrong pointer. Going from being at a valley here to being at a peak here. And so down and axial becomes down and equatorial. And so when we do a chair flip, every valley becomes a peak and vice versa, right? All the positions that were peaks are now valleys. In this case, it doesn't matter because they all just have hydrogens attached to them. And every axial group becomes equatorial. Right? So, and this is also true for the equatorial groups. All the equatorial groups become axial. So what this means is that when we have a six-membered ring, axial and equatorial can be converted between them, right? And so we can take an axial group, do a bond rotation, and get to an equatorial group. We can take an equatorial group, do a bond rotation, and get to an axial group. These two things, the equatorial versus the axial, the two chair flip conformers are conformational isomers. They're just like anti versus gauche when we looked at Newman projections, right? Okay, so... Why is this useful? This is mostly useful when we have more than one group, right? If you just have one group, you're really only ever gonna see this, right? Where the methyl group is equatorial because that's the most stable, right? We don't have to worry too much about it. When you have two groups, so let's say that we look at, I give you a structure that looks like this. Right, and now the dashed bonds equals down, the wedge bonds equal up, right? So that's just kind of the convention when we do these things. If we draw this, we draw a chair, and I'm gonna say this is carbon one, two, and three, and I'm gonna make carbon one up here, right? And carbon one is a peak, that means that up is axial and down is equatorial. So we put the CH3 group that's down in the equatorial position, and that's a good thing. And carbon two is here, and then carbon three is over here, and again, that's a peak, so we have our hydrogen up and our methyl group in the equatorial position. All right, so we have two groups equatorial. So that's a good thing, right? That's obviously the most stable one. If we looked at the ring flip of this, right, if we did a ring flip or a chair flip, what you're going to get is, so what happens when we do a chair flip is, right, all the peaks become valleys and all the valleys become peaks, all the axial become equatorial, and all the equatorial become axial. So now carbon one that was a peak is now a valley, so let's make it this valley here. And then if it's a valley, that means that axial is straight down, so we get hydrogen up and methyl group down. Carbon two, carbon three, carbon three, also a valley, was a peak. Right, so after we ring flip it, it becomes a valley, which means that the down position is an axial position. So we have two CH3 groups in two axial positions, two groups axial. This is bad news, right? This is unstable. If we have any kind of a choice, we would always choose to put the two groups at the top. Now, what happens if we switch one of those groups? Right, let's make this one into a wedge. Right? And that one into a dash. Now when we draw this, so if we make carbon one a peak, up is axial, which means we have an axial methyl group. And right now you're thinking, oh man, we messed this up. But of course, carbon three hasn't changed. And so now the methyl group, so carbon three is also a peak, which means that the methyl group is down in equatorial. And so now we have one axial group, axial, equatorial. And in this case, we can't make it so that they're both equatorial, right? Because if we do a ring flip, what's going to happen? Ring flip. The axial will become equatorial. The equatorial will become axial. 
instead of having two dealing with two peaks we're going to be at two valleys so down is axial hydrogen up is equatorial which is methyl up is equatorial which is hydrogen but down is axial at carbon three and so we end up again with one axial and one equatorial and so in this case, this compound doesn't matter which ring flip you choose because they're both pretty much equally stable. Equally stable. Because, of course, right, in each case you have one axial. So you have one Gauche interaction and you have one anti-interaction. And over here you have one anti-interaction and one Gauche interaction. So the same. Incidentally, if you think back to your stereochemistry, these two compounds are diastereomers of each other because we have two stereocenters right and we've changed one of them so just a quick little nod to stereochemistry because that's coming back soon these are diastereomers of each other so in one diastereomer you can get both groups equatorial and the other one so when you have more than two or when you have two groups or more so two or more groups on cyclohexane your goal okay. so oops your most stable chair conformation will be when the largest group, and remember that when we say largest group, what we mean is group with the most sigma bonds, when the largest group is anti to the six membered ring. And that means your largest group will be equatorial. So if you're given a six membered ring and you're asked what's the most stable form of this, that what I, we've just written down is the best answer to that, right? So you need to be able to get there either by drawing the chair and putting the largest group anti to the ring, putting the largest group in an equatorial position, or by drawing the chair, noticing that your largest group is in the axial position and then doing a ring flip to convert it so that that large group is equatorial. But really this is the main thing that we take away from six-membered ring analysis, cyclohexane analysis is, Put your large group equatorial and then whatever else happens after that right everything else is going to be determined by where that large group is so there's a worksheet where you can practice drawing chairs you can practice drawing ring flips you can go from axial to equatorial you can go from um yeah less stable to more stable all that kind of stuff right so practice on that worksheet bring those questions to class and all that good stuff and you will be cyclohexane experts in no time all right, so we're going to switch gears. The next set of lectures is uh, looking at naming stereoisomers. So how, what do we call different enantiomers? What do we call different diastereomers? Et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's some naming stuff coming up, uh, which is fun. It's, people like it because it's lots of rules that you can follow and know and remember, and then you know it all. So look forward to that. And bring any questions that you have about chair confirmations to class soon. All right. Thanks.